Tom here, Bay Area Surfcaster, Golden Gate Plug Works. Um, just gonna give a little rundown on tins. Uh, this goes out to Kirby at Team Lao. Um, he's asking about tins. No, that is not the only tin that I have or carry. Okay, and I'll just give you a rundown of what these sort of do, what they mean. Um, where you can see there's a lot of different sizes, lots of different shapes. Each one of them sort of has its own its own purpose. Okay, so out of the bag, tin is usually, especially during the daytime, it's going to be the first plug in the water for me, no doubt. Okay, these things cast like rockets. They hit the bottom quick. They don't get swept. Uh, and they allow you to search the deeper water which is where most of the larger fish are hanging out and they'll allow you to also find structure all right you let that thing you know you you, you know when the thing hits the water okay you cast it it hits the water then you start to count down okay you feel it hit the bottom you pick it up you reel it a little bit and then you let it hit the bottom again okay and you you can kind of feel how long that takes you do that every like 10 cranks, okay? So you'll pick it up and then all of a sudden it'll take longer to hit the bottom, okay? That's not because it got pulled up too high, it's because you're now dropping it down into structure, into a hole, into a cut or a channel made by current, especially on sand beach, not so much on rocky beaches, but in California, sandy beaches are what we fish so this basically pertains more to that so it basically is sort of a structure hunter and it'll get you down in the zone where the bigger fish are okay so you notice everybody knows castmaster here's a point jude version crocodiles okay these spoons um have a real erratic sort of fluttering action back to back and forth back and forth back and forth and pretty much for all of these lures you're gonna feel that cadence on the rod tip that tap 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 when you're reeling you want to get that reel retrieve as slow as possible and still have that cadence popping okay and if you get that thing popping and you slow it down even more and it's still going that's even better okay the slower the better um, but each of these has a different purpose. They serve uh, sizes mainly for weight and shape mainly for matching bait fish. All right, so here in the Bay Area, we got sand crabs, okay? Kind of looks like the profile of a sand crab. Okay, we got anchovies and all kinds of, um, like, uh, sardines sometimes but mainly anchovy so all of these are going to represent that type of profile okay even these will represent in some way shape or form that profile it doesn't have to be exact um on the east coast we have a lot of sand eels i'm from the east coast new york uh long island and um so a lot of my surf casting knowledge and experience comes from fishing back east and I've spent the better part of the last 15 years trying to uh, transcribe those techniques and use them here on the west coast. So on the east coast we have a lot of sand eel, okay, or sand lance. They're not really eels, they're fish, but they look like eels um, because of their slender profile. California has sand lances. I've not seen them particularly uh, in abundance, but they are here apparently. I've read uh, stories uh, and research papers about maritime uh, aquatic creatures and sand lances are definitely in our Pacific watershed. So could see that a lot of these represent that okay two different kinds of lures that I mainly fish in tins the Charlie Graves okay these diamond jigs 
They're called, I guess, uh, you know, in layman's terms and uh, tins or white metal is basically what these are made out of. You can see the difference right here, okay? This is block tin, this is white metal, okay? The difference being the white metal is denser, it's heavier, and it has a greater specific gravity in water than block tin. So this is going to sink less quickly as opposed to the metal, white metal. White metal is uh, kind of the way they make tins now. Charlie Gray still offers them in both. And so if you have a choice, you want to get both because they do different things. Okay, the slower they sink in the water column, um, the more uh, zone you're able to fish at a slower retrieve. Okay, does that make sense? Heavier lures to get them up high, you gotta retrieve them fast. In order to do that, you may be turning fish off to the strike. So like I said before, the slower, the better. Okay, you've got this. This is kinda like this. These are, you know, maybe more like boat type jigs. You know, drop them down to the bottom and pop them up and down. Um, but this one I think is two ounces and it casts like a rocket ship. So you can get these out and bounce them along the bottom and uh, you can do damage with those. The uh, Cast Masters, you know, everybody knows Cast Master. Okay, Crocodile, everybody knows Crocodile, Spoons, okay, these uh, have sort of an erotic flutter action. Second uh, type of tins that I fish mainly are Point Jude, okay, Nautilus, Butterfish, um, Poji, here you've got a Deadly Dick, another East Coast Crusher, especially when the Albies are around. Um, but a lot of these, you know, lures, they really shine when they're on the bottom, okay? You let them sink, you bring them back. However, any one of these lures, if retrieved quickly or if popped, could be fished on the top water like a popper. Seriously. I mean, last season, I was back east visiting family in Jersey, and I was crushing bluefish on this little 007 right here, popping it along the top making it splash, 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 just like a popper, fast retrieve, almost like an Albi type situation. You're, cr you know, just burning that reel to keep that thing on the top surface, sputting water, you know, sputtering water all over the place and uh, looking as erratic as possible, like a scared bait fish would be running from a predator. Uh, so these are very versatile lures. You think that, you know, heavy metal tin, it's just gonna fall to the bottom and you know, that's all you're gonna do, but that's not entirely true. They really are versatile and it just depends on the way you work them. So definite sand deal imitation, but also if you look at the profile, it could be a three to four inch anchovy, you know, easily. So there's, um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, use I think for these on the west coast you know probably not A27s these are like three ounces I think two and a half to three ounces these are heavy and um, you need the right setup to, ch to chuck those but the A17 the 007 uh, you know these are these are go-to lures um, I love this block tin I think this is a J6 uh, if you go on charliegraves.com uh, uh, and click tins, uh, classic tins, you'll see these ones. Um, this is like a, J, a J4 a or a J6. This guy right here, same profile, you see? But bigger and heavier. I think this is the J8. Maybe two and a half ounces versus one ounce or one and a half ounces. Um, they're all over one ounce. Um, they all cast really well, um, with the exception of probably these 
they don't cast as well. They sort of, especially if it's windy, these sort of spoon-like cups will catch the wind and flutter in the air and sort of zap your, uh, your cast. Um, but as far as, um, you know, seeking fish out, your tin is going to be, for me, it's the first out of the bag, either a tin or a bucktail. Try to find structure, try to find the holes, and then try and find the fish. Over here, you've got another sort of uh, plastic type, uh, you know, paddle, not paddle tail, but more like an eel-like imitation. These guys swim side to side. Um, they have two line ties, one on top for vertical jigging and one in front for uh, pulling the lure towards you. And basically it's going to look like this another version made by uh, Storm. Big cup in the front to make it wobble back and forth. It's got its set hook there and then it's got a trailer hook attached with Dacron on like a 10 inch tail. Okay, so you could see, uh, you know, tins are a big part of the arsenal. You want to have them in your bag. You want to use them regularly. Um, they find fish, and they also find structure. Like, uh, for example, super, super big sweep. Like, lots of wind coming left to right. You've got that water sweeping. Maybe the tide, huge tidal push is coming through, and it's pushing that water down from side to side. A lot of times you'll notice you cast your lure out and then when you're retrieving your lure it comes back almost at like a 30 degree angle, 35, 40 degree angle from where you were uh, originally aiming and where that lure actually touched down. Okay, there's, there's something you could do, it's called walking the dog. And you basically cast the lure out in that situation and you just walk it in the direction that it is uh, drifting. And you're walking that lure down, and eventually that lure is gonna find a hole and it's gonna stop. And when you find that hole when it stops, that's where you stop and that's where you try to aim for and fish. You wanna get that lure down in that less uh, turbulent water and uh, see if you can't retrieve it more on a uh, straight line from where you intended it to uh, sort of touch down and start working. You know, that being said, if you have a big sweep and you want the lure to touch down at 12 o'clock straight out in front of you, then maybe you're looking to cast out, you know, 10 o'clock and then allow that lure to sweep into that zone as you're retrieving it. But most important, uh, is get in contact with the lure as quickly as possible. So the way I do that is after I cast the lure, right before the lure touches down, I'm taking my finger and I'm grabbing the line. I'm holding the rod. Line is furling off of the spool. Right before it touches down, boom. I sort of break, put the brakes on that line and the weight of the tin is gonna pull that line straight. It's gonna pull that big wind belly out of the line and it's going to straighten it out. By the time it hits the water, you're able to pick up, start your retrieve, and you've got contact on that lure quick. And that's really what you want. If you've got a giant belly in that line, you know, it's, it's just fat, then uh, you're not really in contact with the lure and anything that's coming and touching that lure, you're not gonna know, right? So you wanna get contact quick, keep that retrieve speed as slow as possible, and use these uh, sort of, to sort of define where you wanna fish. If you don't know where to fish, if you don't know where structure is, these will find it. So let, uh, you know, let the learning curve begin and uh, Get some tins in your bag and use them to find fish because that's really what their job is. And daytime, there's there's not much better than these. So uh, yeah, that's my uh, 
that's my take on tins and I uh, hope you guys stay safe out there um, stay inside wash your hands be kind and um, yeah we'll see you out there tight lines <laughs>